test part, but they kind of blend together and come in to one consistent tendon. On the biodigital human, it looked like it was down a little bit further. It's probably closer to the head of the femur, so it's like the, the lesser trochanter area. Okay. Um, you know, so food for thought. Is the iliopsoas a one joint muscle or a two joint muscle? We kind of have it categorized as a one joint muscle because it has the most action at the hip. But if you think about it, the psoas portion of it comes from several segments of the lumbar spine. So those are actually all joints too, aren't they? And that's probably not going to be a question in your test. Is it a one joint or a two joint muscle? Well, I might say, well, yeah, that's probably not going to be a question on the test because that's just a little confusing. Okay, um, but they do blend together and they create a flexion. Okay, so here's that picture again of how some of that stuff works. Okay, so prime movers of the hip. So here's your list of prime movers, in case you really ever wanted to know. Uh, study this for trivia night or the test. This <laughs> 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 Friday. You know? I've actually I've actually helped teams win because of they had like you know certain anatomical questions on there that I knew. <laughs> Those are the only ones I know, but I right. So hip flexion, we're looking at rectus femoris, iliopsoas, pectineus actually plays a role, tensor fasciolata can play a role, um, sartorius will play a role. So if you want to circle, the ones that are starred are going to be your prime prime movers. These are helpers, the stars are the prime movers. Let me say that one more time, these are helpers. These are prime movers. Star equals prime mover. Okay. For extension, all of these are really prime movers. Okay, so semitendinosus, semimembranosus, biceps femoris. Those three together are your hamstrings. They are your strong hip extensors, along with gluteus maximus. It will play a role in, it, in the external rotation but for the most part, its strong role is in hip extension. Okay, so going upstairs, you really have to pull on that glute to straighten that hip out to pull you up to the next level. Okay. Okay, a deduction. Again, we got lots of stars here, don't we? Okay, people love great breakfast muffins. We've already had that discussion, right? All right, a deduction. So the big players here are gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. Tensor fasciolata, TFL, tensor fasciolata will play a role. Sartorius plays a role. Sartorius doesn't do anything on its own, you know, it doesn't, it's not a prime mover for anything, but it plays a role in several motions. It helps with flexion, abduction, external rotation, actually plays a little role at the knee. Internal rotation or medial rotation, that's going to be gluteus minimus, also participates in adduction. Lateral rotation or external rotation are going to be your deep six rotators. So you really want to remember this, this group, the deep six rotators. I'll say name five or four of the deep six rotators. It's kind of like knowing the rotator cuff in the shoulder. <laughs> okay. So there's really only about three things to remember. Yeah, I know, you're still working on that one, aren't you? <laughs> so we've got gamella superior, so that tells you there's probably an inferior. Okay, so there's one thing, gamella superior, gamella inferior, obturator internus, obturator externus, quadratus femoris, and, and piriformis. Those are what we call the deep six rotators. Gluteus maximus will play a role in it as well and sartorius will play a role in it as well. 